All right, we've got an interesting system here. Let's just jump in and get started. Okay, suction manifold. Three-way jandy valve. We've got the cleaner side, so that's a, a wall-mounted suction point for vacuum cleaners uh, or for uh, plugging your back hose into. Street elbow, we prefer sweep elbow. And on this side, we've got our skimmer connection. Nice two-inch pipe with a sweep elbow, so it's nice to see that two-inch. But if I had a two-inch suction line, I wouldn't reduce to inch and a half. I think that's even inch and a quarter right here. So you've got a two inch suction line reduced to inch and a quarter. That's no good at all. That absolutely should be a minimum of two inch. This clamp is no good. It's not leaking, but I wouldn't trust that to not blow off. Um, yeah, definitely, definitely no good here. That should be bigger. Um, and as a result, this pump is experiencing a, a fairly significant resistance to flow that it has to overcome. Um, just because of that, that restriction right there. So out of the top of the pump, into the filter. Holy sh I hope that's not accurate. I'm gonna have to double check as soon as I'm done filming this, but at 45 PSI, that is dangerous. Dangerously high. Uh, okay, so out of the filter, we go into this black PVC into a gold line solar controller, a motorized valve actuator, that's what that's called there. It's a 12 volt uh, uh, motor operated, basically you turn a switch, that's usually mounted right down on the bottom here, and this will automatically change positioning. Uh, and the reason that's installed is because there's a solar system installed on the roof of this house. So that's, a, that's basically how you zone it in, um, and that's how you control it with an automation system there that you can uh, you can have it auto detect water temperature and then turn on any time that there's a call for heat. Um, it's a pretty nice setup and, and definitely something that a lot of people should think about. I mean, free heat for your pool is nice, right? Everybody wants that. Uh, so we come back down into the heater, back out of the heater here, and then we go down <clears throat> into this uh, combo unit here, the Zodiac. Clear water system, uh, there's a pretty big leak from it. You can't really see, but the, the floor is wet and it all seems to be coming from right here. So, uh, definitely a leak in that system that should be fixed. You can see pretty extensive staining on there. Probably been like that for a while. I do not like that there's no check valve in between that salt chlorinator and this heater, because of course now the heater is not protected against that chlorine. And we come back out of that unit and we've got a hard street elbow right into a, uh, a three-way diverter valve into a return manifold. So I believe those three there are probably going to go to a set of laminar deck jets. Uh, and that would be pretty normal because they're currently in the off position. People hardly ever use those deck jets. Uh, and then this is the actual return side to the pool. One side to the steps, one side to the, the pool returns itself. That flow restriction right there has got to go. Uh, definitely making the system work pretty hard. Um, heater is not bonded, pump is not bonded, leaks, that is a, pr a serious issue, that should be fixed immediately, but uh, most importantly, most notable in this room by a long shot, is the fact that this filter is currently reading at 45 psi, 50 is the hard maximum that these systems can endure before they, they're even dangerous and they can explode, and I mean, 30 is really the maximum I would ever want to see my system operating at, and you can see all the water, that's leaking out of there. It's uh, This filter could very well be at 45 PSI due to there could be a flow restriction. It could have been weeks or months since it was backwashed. I'm not really sure what would cause that, but I'm gonna have to look into it here because that's, that's too dangerous to leave like that.